I guess I gotta go to Angler Square. Hey everybody, welcome to our, um, well this isn't an annual, but this is our first Snakehead seminar, especially on Facebook and Instagram Live. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, just real quick, I want to just introduce everybody. So we have the famous Kaz Kenny here. We have Eddie from Wolfer General Store. We have Jim from DNR here. And we have Gary, who's also a guide with Eddie and Kaz. So uh, we're going to be talking about a ton of different stuff, mostly all related to fishing and lures. Uh, but the big thing of having this live is we want you guys to tune in and uh, shoot us some questions. So uh, every five or ten minutes or so, we'll probably take a few questions um, that you guys have and, and run it around the circle and see what everybody thinks. Um, so just want to do just like a quick intro. I know no one knows Kaz, obviously, so, uh, <laughs> um, but I feel like there are some things people want to know. So you are, you are kind of the face of Snakehead. You have your Snakehead shirt, your Snakehead hat on. How did you get into Snakeheads? So in 2009, I just want to get us on the other pages too. Yeah. So in 2009, I was fishing a place called Maple Dam Road in Dorchester County. Mm -hmm. And it was a great place for me to catch perch and bass. And, and I actually went there on the white perch run. That's why I was there fishing with a bob and a minnow. And I caught the first snakehead. And I wasn't even sure what it was, to be honest with you. I thought it might have been a bow fin. It mm -hmm. might have been a snakehead, but I wasn't sure. I threw right back, and the next fish I caught was another snakehead about that big. Oh, man, that's weird. Caught a couple white perch, and sure enough, there was another snakehead, three. And I had my, mm -hmm. I had what I wanted to eat for white perch, so I was right. ready to go, and I took the snakeheads back, and I got them all going. I'm like, hey, man, I was like, what is this? This mm -hmm. one in both fins? He goes, I think that's a snakehead. I says, I don't know, man, so I Googled snakeheads. And I'll be dang it, it wasn't the same fish that they had in the crawfish pond. Back mm -hmm. in 2002 or whatever. Yeah. Was, you know? Yeah. So I thought, this is pretty weird. So I didn't think much of it, but I can tell you this I was pretty fascinated that I saw something I had never seen before in the water. Right. And I was pretty excited and ready to see if I could find another one. Mm -hmm. So the next day I came back, and I think it was probably a couple weeks before I caught another one. I didn't catch hundreds and hundreds the first yeah. year I found them. I caught a handful. That's it. Uh -huh. you know? And then the next year, I noticed that. I was seeing one or two here at other spots. Wasn't necessarily catching them, but I was seeing them. I knew what they looked like now, you know? Mm -hmm. So I started to shift my focus a little bit from the normal fish that I like to chase around the islands, mm -hmm. let's say. And I started really going after these snakeheads because I was just curious. I'd been mm -hmm. reading about them. I just thought they were awesome, you know? So, uh, so I started chasing them, and that's kind of how it started for me. And I've it's pretty much I've never looked back. I've tried to share what I've learned with other people. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of these guys that's going to covet a spot or not help you out. You know, if you want some help, I'm going to do what I can to help you. People help me learn to fish. Mm -hmm. That's how we learn to fish. Snakeheadlife.com was created to try to bring the community together. You know, right. to try to bring together the release guys, bring together the harvest guys. Let's create a community of, of anglers. We can get along. We can agree to disagree. We can all have differences of opinion, and we all are okay, you know, I, 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 that's what we've tried to do with it, but as far as the snakeheads go, God, I love catching them, they are fun, they are mm -hmm. fun to chase, as far as any fish in my life I've ever targeted, I'd have to say snakehead are probably the trickiest, you know, yeah. just when you think you got them figured out, mm -hmm. the next day it's a totally different ballgame. Well, know? speaking so. for snakehead fishermen everywhere, I think we we all enjoy you being the ambassador <laughs> of, sna of snakehead in Dorchester County. Well, that's what I am. So, uh, so. It, so. <laughs> no, but I feel like you have turned a lot of people onto it and really helped help, yeah. help in spreading it. So I think that's that's a really really a cool thing. Um, so I mean, that gets us to our next important question: is kind of you know we think of we always call you know fish her and this and that. So it's like if a snakehead was your woman, what would oh, her name man, be? Serious. What would her name be? Well, if it, and it, actually, it, this is probably a good question okay, yeah. for everybody that yeah, I think needs yeah, to be yeah, let's answered. Let's through. So, so if, if a snakehead was going to be my girlfriend, I had to give her a name, and she was big and she was beautiful, and had a nice pattern, and, uh, she was as smooth as could be, man. Snakes. First thing that comes to my mind is Medusa. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good one. I think it's kind of. I'm hot. surprised that's actually not a popular name right now. It very well <laughs> might be. You know, everything seems to come back around. So, Eddie, what's it going to be? What's, what's her name? That? Oh, man. That's kind of stole yours, yeah, yeah, Medusa's a good one. I don't, I don't know if I can that is, that Yeah, that is a really good one. I think that's almost too on point. She has, an, she has literal snakes on her head. That, that's almost too much. So, uh, so Kaz, I, like, another thing I feel like I was thinking about, you know, certain things you know, I don't know, this and that. It's like, if there was one thing about Snakehead that no one knows that you feel like they should, what would that one thing be? And I feel like that's for all you guys, because I think when you go out there, you actually fish them, catch them. 
you kind of think this and that. I think my first thought when I started catching them and one jumped out of my cooler was, I should have a taser on board. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you know, like that was my thought. You know, that's I was like, people should know this. <laughs> you know, like no one told me the type of thing. So I don't know if there's anything that you've seen out there that you're kind of like, man, people should really know. This, this, is the, this is the one thing and that I can tell you. guys about. jump in if you have something. Well, this is the one thing you've all heard me say since day one. If there's one thing that I know about snakeheads, when the group as a whole decides to eat, they all eat. Mm -hmm. If I can get one of those fish fired up in that pack, I can get them all fired up. So you think it's, you think sometimes it's not about them all already being on the feed. You think that coaxing one of them. Yeah, I mean, I've seen lots of That's times where, where I'm sitting in an area and they're not feeding and I'm just watching and I, I know in my mind that if I can just get this one fish to bite or two fish to bite, I can get everybody in the area interested. When they hear that pop and they hear that noise, it's like they come right to it. You know what I mean? So I try yeah. to, if, if I'm struggling and I'm not doing anything, I'm going to something noisy, I'm going to something loud, I'm going to something they can see. Mm -hmm. If I can get one to bite, you know I can usually do pretty good. On. It definitely changes the tide when you finally get that first bite. It, feel, it feels like snowballs from there. Yeah. That, that, that's definitely definitely yeah. something to it. It's funny how you catch certain species of fish and it turns the rest of, you know, they all leave and it's like you got your one fish yep. and they're gone and then there's other species like that where you're like, nope, this is the, this is only going to What do you think about everybody. tides, things like that? I mean, a lot of people talk about tides. I mean, I've seen it on low tide. I know high tide gets really tough for us because they can get back in the frog and we can't get to them. But. Mo moving tide seems to be the best for me. I found if you can catch them on a move from coming from a high tide, going to a low tide with a tide, at least, at least in the Dorchester area, you can really get a better bite that way. It seems seems the fish are more active at least. Yeah. I think maybe with the tide, that it's more the native fish. The minnows and, and whatever, you know, small bluegills, whatever mm -hmm. they're after. They're adjusted to tides. You know, they're, they're born and raised into it, so they're natural, and I don't think the snakeheads just kind of follow that. Yeah. You know, they're going to eat when the baits are moving. Yeah, that's right. So, so they're going to, well, I think they're we going all follow. see this too, where you have snakeheads and you almost can see them on the shoreline, and you're almost like it's not winter, so they're not hibernating, but they're kind of just laying there in the yeah. mud, and you're like, yeah. you almost feel like they're, they're saving their energy, yeah, like they're, they're not going to do anything until they feel like there's yeah. really food here. I feel like right. that's part of their that's way of survival is absolutely. is just that being able to be picky or wait out these tides or you know when the bait's coming because. I swear I've had several times where I feel like I'm just poking with the end of my rod. I'm like, why don't you do something? You know, like. <laughs> I wish you had your bow that day. Yeah. <laughs> well, You're talking about the one other things thing. you should know you should have. When okay, that. Gary, how about how about the one that you got there one day that was just netted with a net came up? Yeah. I remember no, that I story. Swam, that was one pretty cool. swam into my net alongside my mm -hmm. kayak. Yeah. But the one thing, the one thing I would say, just because you cast it the same place 51 times, yeah. don't mean it ain't going to hit it on the 52nd time. And there are ways to make them mad. Yeah. You know, it's like bass, when bass are on uh, on weed beds and stuff, is you can aggravate them to the point that they will strike. Right. And they don't want to, but they will. And, you know, no different than dogs or people or anything else. You can push them <laughs> to the point that they don't want to. <laughs> right. know, Which is what you want. I think if you can get the initial reaction out of a few mm -hmm. fish, I think you can get... What do you think, yeah. Jim? Yeah, well, I was coming more from a biology side when you asked about your one thing, and I was thinking people always ask about the data and how much data we got. And the one thing I would say is getting data for snakeheads is much harder than other fish because of where they like to live. Mm -hmm. right. You know, we got there trying to electroshock shock them with a, a shock boat, and the back end of the boat's hitting mud, and the front of the probes are still 20 feet from the bank, and you can't get to where they want to be. So well, and they float to the tough. top, they're in fragmites. Right, exactly. Yeah. 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 Anyway. So they're tough to... The sample. Well, I think with like such a short span of them even being available, it's not like there's also not publications and this and that out where you're like, okay, well, let's look at the 30 year history of how people have been right. catching them and how they move. It's like right. none of that exists. It's like not conversations sure. like this. And We're learning as we go. I mean, that's the thing. We're it's kind of like kind of how you're you're figuring this stuff out. So, what is where is the place that people should be going to catch <laughs> snakehead right now? Because I think most people watching this video are probably thinking, well, if it's a nice weekend this weekend, I'm going to go out and fish somewhere. Where are they heading to? I mean, are they heading to Wolford store and heading out with <laughs> yep. Taz Kenny Guide? Yep. And Eddie or, well, no. well, you, can, you, can, you can always stop in the store and you can usually yep. find myself or Eddie or Gary somewhere mm -hmm. around. You know, well, this is the fall pool. season. Yeah. The bite is turning on hard, I yeah, guess. What would you guys is. say the difference is now between maybe the middle of summer? Like, what, what water are you looking for a little more? Because that, that changes, you know, where you really want right. to be. Not necessarily the exact spot, but what are you kind of looking for? You know, are you fishing a little deeper water or a little farther back? Or? I think the colder it is, the, the deeper you definitely want to fish. Yeah. Um, it, as it as it cools off, you want to try and steer away from the top water a little bit. 
maybe do some diving, diving baits or some live minnows. That's that's definitely the better. From type. the bait boys. Right from the bait boys. And you, and you get snakehead destroyers right here at Angler Sports Center too. We have at least fifty more plugs, so just be prepared <laughs> for this onslaught of sales plugs that we have coming to you. It, it's it, it won't stop now. No. Um, <laughs> That's pretty interesting because I feel like most other species kind of the fall is, well, like especially traditionally here, striped bass are, right. the fall is our yeah, top water absolutely. seas. And so I do feel like in everybody's brain, the people I know, it is more like top water, top so water. So that's interesting that you think that as they chill down a little bit, absolutely. That, that more paddle tails, more. Uh, the, the Here's the wonderful is. thing about black water, okay? Black water is shallow, black water's water is dark. I'd be lying to you if I told you I don't catch them on top water in November after three sixty-five, seventy-three days. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The key is to find shallow water that heats up fast. Right. It'll pull the bait up onto those flats, which will in turn pull the snakeheads right up on them flats. As we get into winter, the thing that we've always talked about and we've always noticed is the snakeheads seem to school by size once we get into the winter. When they're all broke up, they're not paired, they're separated. Mm -hmm. So when, when we're targeting them, you know, when me and the guys go out for the day and we're trying to make a little hustle or something like that, if we go to our first spot and we see fish like this, it's not what we want. Right. Pack up and we're gone. We'll keep moving until we find that grade that we're looking for. And if you move around enough, you're going to find what you're looking for. People that fish with me say to me all the time, Kaz, how come you only stayed five minutes at that place? Yeah. A lot. I mean, he'll tell you. And, and what happens? We keep moving, and what happens? We you find them. Yep. You know, we find you them. Know. I don't wait for the snakeheads to come to me. I will go to an area, and I won't even fish. I'll get out, talk to everybody. <laughs> I, I won't. I'm You'll stand there for a half hour, and not even. I'll, I'll stand there for a half hour and watch, talk to people, see what's going on. Before I make up, I'm, I can see a guy catch two fish. That still doesn't make me want to fish. Right. I'm looking for sign. That's the only thing I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a guy with a hundred and a cooler. I could care what he's got. I'm doing my homework the way I've learned to figure these fish out. I'm looking for a flicker up on the bank. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for a piece of frag to move. I'm looking for a pads to shift. Mm -hmm. There's no tide, so if the pad's moving, something's there. Now I'm paying attention. Now I'm watching. When I see what I'm looking for, some feeding. Sometimes what I'll do, I don't tell a lot of people this. I'll take a, <laughs> a five-gallon bucket, mm -hmm. half filled with junk minnows, and guys, I'll be fishing. Up. You guys catching anything? No, I ain't doing no good. We throw lures. I'm throwing this, this, this. All right, anybody got any bait? No, I ain't throwing no bait. I'll go to the truck, get that bucket. I'll reach down. I'll grab my handful of minnows. I'll throw them in the water. And watch. I'm looking for bubbles. Mm -hmm. As soon as I see mm -hmm. a pocket or two of bubbles start popping up, I know something's eating there. So now what do I do? Now I go get my scooper out of my truck. I call them a slingshot. I start slinging minnows out in front of me. What I'm doing is I'm pulling the fish to me, I'm going to hold them to me, and I'm going to load up. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody else around me, not on that same page. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So a lot of times we got to think outside the box. I like to throw a lot of lures, too. Mm -hmm. Myself, personally, if people ask me all the time, if I had to make the choice for a guarantee, what am I going to? If I need a guarantee, I'm going with bait. Right. Okay? If I'm looking for, for, for to get out the box or... I want to go catch specifically a 12, 14 pound snakehead. I'm not throwing little lures. I'm throwing big lures like this. Mm -hmm. I'm throwing musky spinners. I'm throwing some of the stuff the new that SNS has got coming mm -hmm. out, some of their stuff. I mean, their stuff's good too. Yeah, SNS will be coming here soon, guys. There's a lot of good products out there. I mean, <laughs> I mean something like that. I mean, that that right there. Yeah, some fire. big spinner, you know yeah. what I mean? They love spinners. I mean, I tell you guys, flashy right now. Yeah, spinners are definitely a right great way to go. All the, sh all, the, all the shad they're eating right now, little L wife, little men hating, they're all like this big. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you want to be successful right now, you want to match the hatch. That's what I always say. If you want numbers, mm -hmm. if you want, if you just want that one or two big fish for the day, man, roll the dice. Lures, Take a risk. Lures are definitely more fun to fish with. Yeah. But if you're going for numbers, mm -hmm. live bait's the way to go. Yeah. Down. Yeah, and I think that's interesting on the chumming side of it because we obviously chum in the bay, and so like I don't tell like, a lot of people like that. I've hook and lined with you guys. Well, yeah. I know, but I, I'm, I'm giving up some secrets, man. Yeah, it's time. Yeah, why not? We've got to do it. I've been enjoying it now for ten years, man. Let, let's hook some other people up, get them fired up, you know. So we chum, you know, for striped bass here, frozen ly, right? With the scent out, or you go out with some hook and liners, and you know. Well, I, I've been with people, and you know, they'll anchor up to a piling, and they'll throw out 300 spot before they ever put one on a hook. <laughs> right. So same concept right. with your minnow so things. That much, I think yeah. it's pretty, pretty interesting. So I went down Blackwater and tried a bunch of different baits, soft crab things that work here. 
all worked pretty well. Chum bucket did not work that well. So, <laughs> but I do feel like you know, offshore, everybody wiffle ball bats it. You cut the top of the wiffle ball, fill it yep. with minnows, throw them out. So. I love that idea for schooling them up there. So definitely come to Anglers, go to the Wolford store, don't buy a pint of minnows, buy a gallon of minnows, Yeah. dump them really all in the water. Go and, and go and home. Then, yeah. <laughs> no, but I think that's, that is really good. It's, it's, really it's, good. It's, it, it's definitely a good thing. But it's also the kind of thing where you're saying like you're firing up fish. It's uh, Anglers kind of realize this too. It's like if you have five people fishing minnows right next to each other, that does create a school effect. Yeah, and and we all know fish have lateral lines and they feel, uh, they feel these minnows just like they hear that pop. So I think that's another thing is, you know, sometimes fishing alone isn't necessarily the best thing. I will also say this, and, may, and I'm sure it's not everybody at all, but I also feel like a lot of the bank fishermen um, who fish for snakehead are much friendlier and willing to share news than people who probably fish for other species of fish. So I definitely, to all those people out there who are looking at all these public access places, I wouldn't be shy to Absolutely obviously be not. friendly and, and be respectful, but, you know, don't hesitate to go up to someone and ask how they're doing or... You know, how they've been catching or not. I find most people, just because it's so new, are more willing to share than other things. If you went to a largemouth bass area, this and that, you'd probably be, you know, fighting you off with a stick <laughs> kind of thing. Whereas I feel like this kind of fishing, people are a little more, you know, I've, I've been to a bunch of different places and met people I've never met before. And they're like, hey, try over, you know, just, just good advice. And so. honestly, that's the way it used to be years ago, Mike. There was never, like, I, I look back, like, as a kid and, and, and a family. <laughs> My uncle didn't catch a 40-pound rockfish and then not tell somebody where he caught it. Or the bait, or the colors, yeah. or depth. Yeah, we'd say, yeah, man, we caught on backside, tail was on, two-ounce two pair. Oh, yeah, man, thanks. Man, you tell somebody something like that today, they get all bent out of shape, man, think you're ruining their hole or something. Like, Wait a minute, man. If, you're, if I'm worried about some guy coming in my hole, taking all my fish, mm -hmm. I might as well quit fishing. Yeah. That's just how I feel. You well, know? I'm also a part-time biologist, like Jim is here, and um, the snakehead aren't going anywhere. That's my whole thing. So that, that's all I have it's for that. Prediction. I, I, that's a bold prediction, prediction <laughs> but I don't I don't think we're going to run out of it. I, I spend every night, literally, I swear to God, an hour or more just answering messages, helping people. Yeah. It's true. Hey, where should I go? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not, I want to help people. We want you to come visit. We want you to come catch fish. Yeah. You know, you want people to come here and buy all the bait they want so they can go catch them. You know, we want them to get yeah, so we absolutely. want to help them. I mean, that's a thing. All right, let's talk lures real quick. So I want to get your guys, I'm gonna, we're going to do four different different types, and we're going to do catch the biggest, catch the most. So top water lure, what are you going to catch your biggest on? What are you going to catch your most on? I'm going for most. I like spinners. I like to fish fast. I hate fishing slow. Meps. Right. Yeah, 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 but which spinner? Meps? Like a, I like a Vibrex. Oh, you like the blue two. fox Vibrex number twos? Yeah. Gold or silver one. Gold or silver Vibrex number favorite. two. They just started making those in glow colors too, so that could be pretty exciting. Night fishing, night fishing. <laughs> I, I, am, I am seeing, I will say this, not to interrupt, but I am noticing that the night fishing is getting better with glow style baits. Anyway, that's what we know. I would say for me, I fish black water a lot, which is shallow and stumpy. Mm -hmm. So spinner baits don't work real well, you're going to get hung up and stuff. I'm a big buzz bait fan. Yeah. And, and basically, I. I don't go with ten different colors and skirt different colors. I use yellow and white. Mm -hmm. when, yeah, that's and, and the ones with the frogs as well. That's, that's yellow that's during the day when the sun's shining bright. If it's cloudy, white all day. So buzz baits can mean a lot of different anymore. things. Just for the guys yeah. on here, what do you like to use for your buzz baits? Like which which buzz baits do you like to use? Are they it's mostly hard little, baits? Uh, triangle. That's a, that's a that's booyah. The yeah, the booyah. Yeah, okay, yeah. The, the booyah with the clicker. Yeah, because you can really. And what I'll do a lot of times, it, what I was talking about a while ago, aggravating them. Mm -hmm. If you know one's there and he's hitting and he won't, he won't hit again, cast out over top of it and then crank it in as fast as you can crank it in. And do that about four times and then cast out again, hold your rod up high so you can crank it slow and they will bang the crap out of it. Because yeah. mm -hmm. you made That's it mad. Advice. Very you know, it's, it's, it's like a bunch of little ducks swimming across the water. And you got one that's got a bad wing or something. He's a little slow. Yeah. That's the one you're going to hit. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's really sound advice. That's good. That's good. Come back over there, man. They will slam the crap out of the biggest one. That, that toad buzz. Is that, it really? That, that KV toad buzz. Okay, but true. what if you had to catch your biggest snake? That, that toad buzz. Absolutely. The, the toad buzz. Man, I've had great success. I'm, I'm apparently buzz. missing out. We brought the toad them in this year, and they are just smoking down. I have smashed with that toad buzz all year long. So, Kaz, what about you? What's your What's going to be your go-to for your biggest biggest fish? a lot of a lot of fish are 15 pounds on a lot of different baits, and that's that's where the problem lies. Well, the pro it's, it's what's problem. your favorite. What would you prefer? For me, if, if I've got to open my box up and I've got one lure to grab, 
heard this quite before. <laughs> well, I know because, because so I got like, he's I got like, this, I got like three on the line. Real quick. <laughs> so like I catch the most on the Meps number three yeah. with the white hair. For whatever reason, the white it, white does seem to be a great color for Snakehead. Right. Same thing like you were saying, very well, stumpy you're, down. You're under the water with that white. That's why that white looks yellow. Yeah. 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 So so in stuff. turn though, it's a tough bait to fish, like you guys are saying, right. shallow, it's muddy. So. They actually, they've been selling these for a while, but they came out with a new one. So MEPS makes the Black Fury, which has the weedless uh, curl tail on it. They just came out with this in a regular version. So the Black Fury ones, you can only get black blades and they're all bigger. So now they're making a smaller one that I can't wait to try. We haven't gotten it in yet. They just came out with them. But kind of gets your spinner action, but also the weedless. Uh, I know where I'm fishing a lot locally around here. There's so much weeds you can't oh, yeah. you can't fish anything that isn't you have you have to have to. Um, and other than that, lots of weedless paddle tails like those Gambler four inch just rigged weedless. Those have been really really great. So my my, my big fish. Lure, it's the Phantom Spider, isn't it? No, it's not the Phantom <laughs> Spider. But I will say that that is pretty neat. And I have seen some guys catch some stuff on that. My my biggest snakehead that I ever caught was of course on a snakehead destroyer. My biggest snakehead that I ever caught on a lure was actually on a musky spinner that was that big. If I had to pick one lure to trust to put say five or ten big fish in the box, I'm going with a whopper flopper. Nice. Go 130, 90? I like 90s and 130s. Um, I'm not afraid to throw a 190. Nice. I, all time, oh, I, I walk, that's a big. That's a big one. I walk out on them bridges, and them guys look over like. And which color? What, which what, color are we going with? The bright green, the brightest green they got. The brightest green. Yeah, 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 for me. But I walk out there like say uh, berries or drawbridges, and I set my rods. And they look over like, what are you fishing for? Mm -hmm. I'm like snakeheads. They're like, what lures that big? I said, well, I'm probably only gonna catch two or three, but there's a pretty good chance yeah. my two or three are gonna be bigger than your ten or fifteen. Well, the good thing about the whopper yeah. popper is you can fish it really fast or really slow. Yeah, and, and, so different ways and for me, yeah. like honestly, Gary said, if I see him, I burn it, burn it, burn it, burn it, and then, slow. And then yeah. I go just. I mean, I'm talking yeah. slow enough just to turn that tail. And as soon as I see him come up behind, take a look. I'll crank just a little bit faster, get him excited, and stop the bait. Just stop the bait. Yeah. Boom. It's funny, too. The Whopper Plopper, two years ago, I feel like, was the token snakehead lore oh, yeah. when it first started. It was, yeah. And now I feel like it's almost taking a back seat, even though it's still a great lore and whatnot, just because there's so much yeah. out there People now. People are definitely exploring the different lures right now. Yeah, yeah, especially the frogs. I mean, I know you guys so are guys frogs. are deep into it now. It feels like, you know, we're all feel like we're buying frogs. Like, <laughs> like, in, like, I, like this never-ending just frog You're ready to start a frog farm. I'm with you yeah. Yeah. About, you know? yeah. So, <laughs> will too. so it, you know, this is kind of a good one. This could be a lore. Or, or something you've gutted, but what's the weirdest thing you've seen them eat? Mm. Lore or not? I'm sure Kaz has 30 answers for this uh, one. Will, I yeah. got pictures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we only need one answer, but the weirdest thing you've either seen them eat Some, off your... Somebody sent me a picture of a muskrat. Of a muskrat? Muskrat yeah. came out of a snakehead. How big was it? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I saw it. I mean, a muskrat's pretty yeah, big to begin. Pretty good that's, size that's, that's pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. We might do some gut checking when we know. Yeah. He has the, the tournaments and that kind of stuff, and, and Gary, too. And I did see one bow fished snakehead that had a giant snakehead in its mouth oh, yeah. as well. Oh, yeah. oh really? Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, that's some, I don't know, it's the weirdest, but it's definitely most impressive. He was right. 28 inches and, 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 snakehead in the snakehead. And, 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 and a lot of, lot of people came in and were like, oh, that stage, that stage. Let me tell you, we pulled the fish out, and Jimmy, tell you, mm -hmm. it was rotten. From mid body down, yeah, so it was already in the stomach stage. being digested. How difficult that would be to stay true. Much less effort. Oh, well, you know, I mean, you know, when, when you show up at a tournament, you've got yeah, a, yeah, a, yeah, a, a yeah, narrow stick in the fish with a big I fish hanging on the fish. Was, people are going to stick. The, the, the snakehead in the belly was a good 18 inches. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, I tried earlier this year live lining snakehead fry for snakehead. They did not care for that. <laughs> So I really didn't think they would eat other snakehead. I don't know if it's just a fry. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've seen snakehead and snakehead yeah. before. Yeah. yeah. We 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 have had them literally where remember the Still one day yeah, yeah where where they where they've ate so many fry that they're hung up in the shards of their gills like stuck on it. Oh wow. And you pull yeah. the mouth open and all you see is just snakehead fry all inside the mouth. Really? Yeah. yeah. So so I'm not sure. we we saw it quite a few times this year. Yeah, we got the picture. I guess somewhere. it depends on. How hungry they are, all that kind of stuff. My, 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 my weirdest thing, and it's not really a weird thing, is uh, we got a 21 inch channel catfish in Ricky's snakehead that was like 14 or 15 pounds. Right. A 21 inch catfish was in there. 
Lindsay, do we have any questions? Yeah, so we do have one question from someone who lives down at Solomon's Island. Okay. And he's wondering, you know, Blackwater's a bit of a haul from there. Is there any place a little bit closer that he might have some success catching snakehead? Yeah, it seems like the snakeheads are in all the tidal creeks right now. Any tidal river that's in Maryland has some snakeheads. I know Tuxen has mm -hmm. some. Uh, of course, Potomac is a great spot, that's too. That's a great spot. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Any, anywhere been, specific yeah, that you're yeah, looking so for? Oh wow! Oh, that's, that's the one with the bow. Yeah. yeah, we'll post this picture oh, yeah, too for yeah, you guys yeah, afterwards. Yeah. So, what, where is a specific spot then? Uh, the, Savage Mills in the Tuxen. Savage Mills. Those ponds that are around there, uh, and then Malice Bay yeah. in the Potomac. So, yeah, yeah. We, Western Shore. Side. We don't we don't want to get too far into all the things that are happening, but right. you can very well assume that Snakehead are in twice the amount of places you think they are, and, oh, yeah. and in yeah. ten times the quantities you do. I know yeah. we've been catching them in the Magapi, the Severn River, so. Um, maybe not as pe many people posting pictures and saying this. I know a lot of people, especially locally, are you know kind of doing that. I'm protecting my own spot for a little bit, but at this point, okay. at this point, it's been it's it, there's so many there's that so I think there's so many different spots. There's salt tolerant apparently because right now it's it's as dry as it's been. The salinity of the levels are up high right. and short, and yeah. they it doesn't seem to affect them a whole lot. No, yeah, they had no. one. They had one caught. Was it yesterday or the day before? And then their harbor. I think I saw somewhere. Yeah, I did see the picture on Snakehead Lake. Yeah. Yeah. I think so the like, big difference is this time last year we were getting customers so sending us pictures from Mattapeak State Park from oh, the yeah. Bay Bridge. Right, right. You're not seeing as much of that right now. So I think most of the catches are back in the yeah. headwaters where the salinity isn't yeah. quite as high. They, so you're they, not seeing. They, they definitely out. prefer the brackish water, but but as as the salt levels have changed, it hasn't really changed their patterns too much. They they've stayed pretty consistent with it. So. Yeah, they, they and, and I can and I can even attest to this. I mean, if last year. Every time somebody would catch one somewhere new, my phone was lit up. Pictures were coming. Yeah. When they found that one, the Severn River last year, that big one, everybody panned it out like, oh my God. Oh, that's what that 17 yeah. pounder. Yeah. And, and that fish, we believe, was a released fish, not a fish that was native to the creek. And the only reason we think that is because the fish where it was found was way down river. The coloring was very, very gone from it. You know what I mean? So, mm. my opinion, not the fact, my opinion is that the fish was probably released, got confused, swam the wrong direction, and just probably died out. Because we didn't see any more like that coming mm -hmm. out of the Severn River. Yeah. You know? And then, so, I mean, I, I just... It's hard to say. They feel, it feels like, you know, most of the areas they live in, especially around here, are places you don't fish for them. Right. So, so a lot of people aren't really fine. You know, usually most species of fish, it's like, well, I was white perch fishing, and then this happened. It's like, right. but that's not where they are. They're yeah. farther back, so... Yeah. You know, it's hard to say. It's like, where have these fish been here? You know, where I right. just found some fish recently. I'm like, have they been here for two years, and I've just been this yep. right. well, blind like, to it? In, or in Blackwater, you can find them in, in the small ditches. I mean, it, yeah. The time, I mean, so it's and they're good sized ones, so it's you, you don't expect them to be there, but <laughs> you know. but they they end up there somehow, <laughs> somewhere. You know, it's necessary, particularly fishing for snakeheads, but there's nothing else. That of any size, it's going to be there. In that, right. That's right. Yeah, that's there's, absolutely right. There's food there. They, they can survive. And a kind of interesting thing, I don't know how much you guys have seen this, but I think I mentioned this earlier, like, you know, who knows, maybe the cormorants, because cormorants are just <laughs> crazy birds, or will eat all the fry up or something. Um, but what I feel like I have seen is, uh, uh, especially like around where I live, I have not seen many birds going. So I watch them all the time, ospreys, this and that. I have not seen many birds really Go for them. You know, eagles. I know. E eagles tend to be the ones that are. We really see them now. Black ones, the ospreys yeah. too. The ospreys, well, you know. They, sick of sick of deer. Well, deer season just came in bow season, mm -hmm. and I've hunted three times on Blackwater on, on some spots a little higher land, and when you go on there, it's freaking fish scales everywhere. Oh and really? Snake heads. Yeah, they have been lighting them up. You just don't see it. But mm -hmm. I mean, the ground literally is covered. You can walk in a hundred foot diameter place to see five, six fish. Yeah, I think those bald eagles down there are doing yeah. okay. I think yeah. last time I was there, I saw them around like. They're the ones making out this deal because this is like yeah. endless food. The ospreys, the ospreys are even good. They're not going to be the endangered bald eagle. Yeah. It's going to be the happily fed bald eagle. Yeah. As far as, as seeing the birds actually with the fish, the eagles have definitely been, been, been the ones that have hit the hardest. Yeah. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. thinking more of the fry. I'm wondering if you guys yeah. have seen like any birds really attack down the fry. So, I mean, obviously you have mama sitting there. Right? I don't yeah, know I mean, if that makes a difference or not. Yeah, or... I mean, my, my, my biggest thing I think is, you know, when the parents are guarding the fry and, and if they're in an aggressive mood, I mean, nothing's, anything that tries to get near them is going to get swiped at or, or scared away or something like that. So, I haven't seen much in the way of birds like picking off the fry. Oh, the I, ha I was fishing one day and there was a fry ball probably maybe 50 yards from me and I watched an osprey come down and grab the parent off of the, 
the, the, the fry ball, and then the other parent was swimming in circles, like, what the heck just happened, you know what I mean? So, I know, I know they're, they're, they're feeding some fish, I just, I haven't seen much of the fry. If anything's eating the fry, I'd probably say it would be other fish, you know what I mean? Yeah. For sure. Especially when the parents get picked off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, switching gears here, um, I think I mentioned it earlier, kind of like my one thing was like, oh man, I should have a taser because these fish are literally jumping out of my cooler. Yeah. And and so I feel like I, I I feel like I do get an in, a different answer from most people. Whether you, do you net, do you lip, and then what do you use? You know. So what's your? I feel like everybody has their system. Like everybody has a system. This is how I do it. You know. Right. What's your system? Basically, what's your system for killing snakes? So, so, you so Gary, Gary, talk I'm, about the product that you invented. Go ahead. I just made. I actually took some some decking and took a piece of aluminum and cut a blade on it. Doesn't need to be sharp. Just, yeah. you, know, you don't want to you don't want to hit the fish and cut him in half. Mm -hmm. So it's aluminum and it's just a V'd edge on it, and it's kind of made like a little hatchet, and it's pretty lightweight. And you just whack them right behind. You can feel down the back of their head is bone, and then when the meat starts, if you hit them right there, mm -hmm. sometimes you got unless you're on a really good solid surface, you got to hit them a couple times. So you but net it them and then yeah, and then but it's severs. I net them and I lip them sometimes just to get them out of the net because. You, yeah. They're essentially trying to grab them, they're slime, you know. Just get them out of net and just hold them down on the ground and whack them. But when you sever yeah. that spinal cord, that slows them right down. Yeah, done. So, so, so here's the thing. DNR wants us to sever the spinal column before transport, mm -hmm. or they want us to remove their gill arches, correct? Or gut them. Or gut them. But they have to be killed. They have to be killed if you're going to take them. For the record, it is not against the law to release a snakehead in the place that you caught it, the exact spot, if you are not going to harvest the fish, it must be released immediately. It is legal to yeah. let them go. You do not have to kill them if you do not want to. No, you them. do not. So, Kaz, what do you use? Do you use the hatchet? So, so I, I use our, you our, 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 chan, our Chanadai chopper, that's what we call it. <laughs> what is it called? The Chanadai chopper. Okay, I like that um, <laughs> So, I either use that or, you know, Roy Boyd over at Westside Snacks, uh -huh. he's got a good idea for what he does in a kayak. He uses a, a nail through a board yep. and puts it right through their, through oh, their brain and done. I do something similar. I take a screwdriver and I ground it off so it's only about two inches long. Mm -hmm. Keep, I net the fish while the fish is still in the net. I put it on my lap and I can just punch it through and that point's not big enough to go through the fish in the lake. Right. So I never take the fish out of the net until it's dead. A lot of guys are asking lately, how, I'm on a kayak, how do I, how do the, I dispatch the nail my or, fish? Or the, or the, the short screwdriver is the best way in the kayak. Mm -hmm. On the ground, the chopper is the best way to go. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah it's probably not the most popular idea, but I actually had heard about the uh, chopper thing, and I was like thinking about it, and I was like, man, I'm going like, to chop my hand off or something <laughs> like that. And, I, and so I, I, I took it out with me, but I still haven't tried it yet. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking to myself, I'm like, God, it would be so much easier if you could literally use a taser. And I don't know if anybody's tried it yet, but I feel like that's a solid. I tell you what, I mean, I, we're down to using hatchets, so I feel like I feel like it sounds crazy and it sounds out of control. But I'm like, is it really that out of control? And then again, I know this won't wouldn't have great feedback, but I'm kind of like, you know, just oh, a, we'll, we'll let you try. Well, and, and then you got it and stuff. I'm saying, you know, right, that's right. not like gonna kill it or anything. But I'll tell you what, a light, Mike, a lightweight I'm taser. I'm gonna go buy a taser this week. And I'm gonna be your guinea pig. I'll I'll try it out. Yeah. So I like so, and video. I think that's a video people want to see, guys. So sure. let's share a video right. of tasing one of these fish. I'll I'll give you a taser. You can take okay. it with you. Sounds good. <laughs> and yes, we do have tasers in our snake head. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lay the fish in your lap. Yeah. So that that's where I've gotten to now. I'm I'm fishing a uh, 14 knot snag hook and I'm using a taser. So that's that's just where this is. No. <laughs> um, so you're also, you're a hatchet man? Yeah, absolutely. If you're fishing from the bank or on land yeah. or the bridge or anything, hatchet's definitely the way to yeah. go. Yeah, and then I don't know if we mentioned it in there. Obviously, they have huge back plates yes. on top of their head, so it is, it's a nice, mm -hmm. solid, yep. so the whole, like, mag light on the back of the head thing just doesn't, no. it doesn't work. It, you might knock them out if, if, with three hits or so. so I, 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 I'll, I'll share, I'll share this story with everybody just so that we know how serious they are about this. I have a friend who um, caught a snake head, and he... Took the time to beat it in the head with a stick, thinking that it was dead, put it in his car. He was driving home and he got stopped. And when the man looked in his car, they checked his fish, and when they touched his fish, the fins rise. Those fins move, that fish is not dead. Now let me tell you what happened to him. I took his driver's license. Seriously, took his driver's license from him. Had to go to court and get his driver's license back. They're not playing with the whole transport thing. So if you're going to take in fish, you got to make sure. That if you so much as poke the eyeball, they don't flinch. Mm -hmm. Now, I've heard that some of the officers now have a poke stick. They lay your fish down on the ground and give them a little poke. That fish's fins rise anywhere, it's not that. 
So I'm just, people need to keep in mind, make sure that your fish is not alive when you put that car in drive. Nice. Well, we've had them at contests where they've been set, yeah. their spinal cord has been set. They're, they're self fish. I mean, yeah, it's cut down an inch die. and a half yeah. from the They back. don't die. It, it'll move. I'm, 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 I'm very confident. They can't, they can't, they're like catfish on crack. <laughs> catfish on crack. My, my brother-in-law <laughs> had one one time. Spinal cord was severed, filleted both sides, yeah. mouth was still oh, chopping. I mean, it's just, I mean, it wasn't yeah. very much. They call it the, the nerves. Or, or, me, yeah. I mean, but he was still hanging on, man. They're, they're tough fish. You really got to. No, they really are. I've never seen a than catfish. I feel like. Yeah. You know, it's visual. I mean, you can tell. He might he might wiggle, he might move his fins, but if his cord, mm -hmm. spinal cord is severed, he's not going to yeah. recover. And that's the, that's the way they're looking at it. If you've, right. if you've severed the cord, if you've removed the gourds, or you've got the fish, and they touch the fish and it moves, you're safe. Yeah. So let's go back to fishing real quick. So just in the here and now, we're obviously having a warmer than normal mm -hmm. fall. It's going to obviously cool off. So what's your guys' take on the fishing right now? Just overall, the lures, how good it's been, and then what do you guys see as the temperature drops in the next 10, 20 degrees? Is it going to slow down? Is it going to pick up? Um, is that opening new opportunities? What are you guys feeling? Fish is definitely going to pick up. As that temperature drops, man, that bite's going to pick up mm -hmm. hard. So the, now the bite is already, it feels it's, like it's been picking up. It's already up. picking up. It has, it has it's already picking it's up. Already it's already starting. You, yeah. you think we're oh just starting yeah, to We're just starting. It's, yeah, it's about to get real heavy. You guys, you guys should be fired up. It's yeah. happening. Yeah. Two, uh, it's cool two more weeks. Down, I think two more weeks, three more weeks. If we can keep getting some cool nights, you're going to start seeing these guys yeah. again with 100, 150 fish in their cool. And what's yeah. too cold for you guys? <laughs> Not much. Not for or, me. or to the point where it starts <laughs> slowing down the bite. You know, when it, we, there's right. always that point where it's like, it's better, it's better. Now it's slowing them for down. For me, it's when rut comes in. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's also a Sika guy, Hunter, in case you didn't know. <laughs> um, well... You know, there, there is always that point where they slow down. Point, yeah, I, you know, so you guys feel like it goes farther than most other fish, that they I stay so. very active. Yeah, yeah. So you guys Especially are looking... black water because it's so warm. Yeah, right? so That's what I'm saying. The, the water water water. We're back at 60 degrees and they're right. eating. February, you can catch, January, February, you catch bass. So obviously open. you guys prefer the evenings in the winter because you have that sun beating down exactly. the water yep. all day long. Mm -hmm. You prefer that now, too, or you think it's about equal? No, it's, it, I actually prefer after the sun goes down it. Either early morning or late afternoon. Right now. Right now, yep. And, if and you tolerate heat, the mosquitoes. And the heat, heat of the summer as well. The, the well I think we talked about this earlier. Yeah. Snake that are eating mosquitoes. Yeah. Should, yeah, that problem should be solved soon. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. the hotter it is, the more I prefer either the mornings or the late evenings because it, it gives that time. If that water gets too hot, me personally, I feel like it kind of shuts that bite down. You really got to find that sweet spot in the temperature. So you're kind of, it's like almost a switch. So right. we're early morning, late exactly. evening, and then as it cools down, we're going to go late afternoon. Exactly right. Higher water I'm temperatures. Right before the edge of dark. Yep, exactly. Even if you've had a slow day, it's, it's like me. I always want something to eat before I go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> but, but now I got to sit here and, and kind of counter yeah. what they're saying. Yeah. I mean, I have days where I don't go out until 12 o'clock, and I smoke from 12 o'clock until 2.30, the bike goes off, and I don't see another fish the rest of the day. So again, I, I yeah. think... This is the thing yeah. about these fish. These fish, you can't. You think you got them figured out, and then you get back the next day. Yeah. It's totally different. Well, scenario, well, I think you know? we'd all agree that you know most people prefer, it, if nothing else, a mid to low tide because, of course, if it's yeah. high tide, they're going to be back right. in the front. Yeah. So, of course, you have to have all those things line up. You know, if it's a Absolutely. flood tide in the evening, that's not going to help you any. Right. No waste of time. <laughs> right. So you want things to line up, but you know it doesn't necessarily always line up. As far as water temperature goes. Okay, so the first three years that I fished for snakeheads, the, the, the thing that, and I think we talked about this in the beginning when we first met, the first three years that I fished for snakeheads, I never caught them in the winter. I never caught them after November. I never even saw them or anything. Mm -hmm. Year four or five, I was standing on a bridge. I'll say the bridge, New Bridge. I was standing on New Bridge. And I was standing there on a, a cold winter day. There was ice on the mm -hmm. edge of the, of the river. I like to go there and throw swim baits in the winter and crack them real slow for big bass because mm -hmm. they usually lay on that flat right there. So I was sitting on the bridge and I'm watching as I'm watching the mud shad come on the surface like this. I see what I'm not sure is on the outside of them, whether they're carp or bass or stripers or what they are, but I see bigger fish on the outside and I see the, the shad ball getting tighter together and then I see these fish moving in and out of nowhere. I just see these fish rip through the shad. They were snakeheads. How did I find out? I threw my swim bait right through the school of shad and as I'm coming through, I whacked the shad, jerked my plug out of that because I you know, foul hooked it, and as it came through and it fell, a snake had grabbed it and took off with it, and that sucker was like that. Mm. I said, you got to be kidding me. So I called Cornflower. I said, Cornflower, I may never going to believe this, man. There's almost ice on the whole river, man. I'm smoking these things down here. He said, what do you mean, man? I caught like 12, 13 of them. He said, get out of here. Come down the next day. Sure enough, we did it again. Mm. So I have been able to prove the fact that 
34 degree water, I've caught those fish. Yeah. And they bit, you know? They gotta eat. That's just true. They gotta That's eat, true. you know? That's true. So, you're not going to smoke a hard fish at the fish. Yeah. It's not, it's not what I'm saying. But so, you can find I realized, as you said that, we have talked about tons of lures, but they're almost all spinner bait, all top water, prop baits, this and that. Swim baits are great baits. Excellent. Soft plastics, hard plastics. Um, obviously, the general thing right now is our fishing weedless, um, weedless salt <laughs> baits, either with, with a spinner, without a spinner, yeah. this and that. Um, so, what do you guys like as far as... So, and I think this is the other thing. So, it's like... You have, you know, we have our belly weighted right. hooks, we have our pure weedless, we've got our, you know, our actual weighted head weedless. What do you guys like? Because you have to go weedless, that's that's a given. Um, but what colors, sizes, four inch, five inch, six inch, and do you generally weight? I know that obviously you change based on condition, but you always start with something. So are you starting blank? Are you starting with weight on your head? Or are you, you know, how are you guys, how are you guys fishing that? You're doing the line or what? Mm -hmm. Hey, Jimmy, why don't you go for it? You can talk about <laughs> I'm, I'm mostly mostly interested in you know color, size, yeah. weight. I like using a zoom trick worm, a white zoom trick worm, nice. weedless, and then I will also use those uh, small weighted jigs that you got and use like a white grub, three inch white grub, because like it works for snakeheads, but it catches other fish too. Yeah. I can catch a perch or a yeah. large mm -hmm. mouth, whatever you want. Roman in the last tournament, he was a key wallace throwing a three inch. Twister. Yeah. That's what he caught. His whole bag one. Couldn't catch him on nothing else. Went to a three inch twister and smoked him. Smoked him. Mm -hmm. Those Kytex do well too. Those yeah, paddle tails. Do they? Yeah, they do really well. And so you guys think you guys are talking about three inch, three inch kind of kind of almost like he, they caught like do you guys think more three inch or are you more five four or five inch? There's a big difference usually in three to four inch bait. Like they sure, usually yeah, look yeah, very yeah, different. Sure. So they're not really an inch different. There's usually big body yeah, yeah. bigger I, I bodies. I don't, I don't like to go over four inch personally. That's just really? like my okay. preference, yep. For, for me, so swim bait wise, I like the Kytex. Um, I like uh, the Riptide Mullet. Um, I like the Gambler line. Um, what color? Do you like the tip tails? I, 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 I like I like a glitter glitter pattern. I like to go with glitter, white so, yeah. white yeah. with glitter, or I like to go with gray or some. I like to stay with like perchy colors, shaddy colors, things like that. Uh, when the yellow perch are in, then I'll go to more of a brown, yellow kind of combination. Mm -hmm. As far as size goes, for me, I'm probably going to say four inch. Three, that, that three and a half to four to four and a half inch is probably the best size for me. I have thrown six inch and nine inch shad bodies <laughs> and caught them. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, I mean, it's it's hard to say. I mean, are you guys... Using weight, I know you said he's using some lighter jig heads. Or Light, you, lighter heads, yeah. Just so lighter. Because it's black water, we're in such shallow water. Right. But are you usually using a head, or are you usually no, it's, belly weight? Yeah, I belly, sometimes a head, depending on, if you can catch it on a real deeper deeper day, I like to go with head weight. Otherwise, you go with the belly weight. Just belly weights, yeah. I don't even use, I don't use the, 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 the so I just use a head weight, uh, a jig head. So just a regular jig you, head. You had some here that you don't have anymore. I tried to find them. They were like a ruby lip, uh -huh. and they were an eighth ounce head, uh -huh. and it had a gamagatsu wide gap hook on it, uh -huh. and I can tell you right now, that son of a gun, that was money for me. Those? Now, see the head, it didn't have a guard on it, it had like a lip, like a mouth on it. Oh, I know what you're saying. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The head. And I, th I think those particular heads, the way that mouth shape, doesn't mm -hmm. allow it to fall as fast. So I can throw that eighth ounce head in two feet of water, like Gary says, keep your rod up high. Yeah. yeah. That's just me. I mean, a lot of the bridge fishing I do, I don't use those. those well, it's funny. Fish. A lot of these like lures haven't really been like specifically made for snakeheads. Right. So we're fishing mm -hmm. bass lures, like yeah. tons That's of redfish thing. lures right. now. Yeah. Um, all these jig heads are basically bass tournament lures. So it'll be interesting. I mean, I know we're all. I'm sure you guys are too. You know, we're either making our own lures right. or we're having people mm -hmm. make them. So yeah. it's definitely kind of. It's tough because everything's made for bass, I mean, yeah. and they just don't quite hold up enough for those big, giant snake heads. Right. We yeah. find that we were literally making rigs exactly. as we go, kind of piecing yeah. stuff together. But that's interesting on that. I'm and and, and like we, we were talking about SS, you know, what he's done with his line is he's upgraded everything, spinner bait, buzz bait, yeah. you know, everything is musky grade tackle. These bass lures are great, and they're going to hold some fish. But when we're when we're targeting that dragon, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I mean. Exactly. The wiring on a lot of this stuff, I mean, it just straightens but out. That's what keeps me and Eddie in business. Well, that's cool, that's cool. So, that's I mean, cool. that's how, how, you know. 30 pound test lines in question when you get those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. these, 
these fish can be brutal. And man. it's funny too because snakehead are one of those fish too where you talk about short strikes is mm. something you hear about all the time. So it's like you're trying to bridge that gap of like. Well, it's funny. Yeah. Uh, like with chatterbaits, a lot of people like use a trailer chatterbaits. I like to cut my skirt shorter because I, I tend to get short strikes with yeah. chatterbaits. Yeah, that's so a good, and that's a, I, probably a good trip on, I don't a tip use, on that. I do not use trailers on my chatterbaits probably 98% yeah. of the time myself either. Yeah, just I noticed that they'll hit it with the with the with the trailer. Just cut it down. But it's yeah. just missing them. Yeah, you know? exactly. Well, and they trailer. have the jackhammers now that have the long. Well, I don't even use a trailer at all. Heavier. Yeah, a lot of times, I'm not even trying to trailer at all. That's just me. I try and put as many hooks on it. Yeah, yeah. Just hooks yeah, well, mine's on Sabiki rig. It's like this long yeah. 18 hooks now. So I was thinking about that one day because I think I was having a conversation with another one of the DNR guys, and it was the same thing. You were talking about how they can't get into these shallow waters to pull these fish up. And, and then we were talking about how kind of snakehead are tough right now because, you know, they eat really well, which we haven't really talked about that part of it. Um, but commercially, you know, the guys can't get pound nets in one foot of water or anything. And I'm like, I'm like how are people not catfish trot lining for snakehead down there, the way they do down south, everywhere else, because I'm sure you could just we talked about you that. could you could just do this, and then I was like, I don't want to go down that road necessarily. <laughs> so before I ask this question, can we legally chug fish for snakeheads? I can't answer that. I have to check that out. <laughs> I think you can yeah, I do not know that anything I'm saying I, is legal. I, 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 I'm not <laughs> done yet, but I'm just I'm just throwing <laughs> well, these look, things just, out just there. Just for the record, because yeah. I don't know if it's legal or not, but I can yeah. tell you I can tell you what I did last year is I took tides, liquid yeah. detergent bottles. And tied line to the handles. Yeah. Hundred pound line, hung hooks off them, threw them out in the branch. That is called trout line. Went went in went in and ate me a sandwich. Came back and three of them jugs were floating around the branch like that. I yeah. went and grabbed one. One had one like that. One had another one like that. One had another one like that. So, I think my customers would appreciate it if we could if they could use their trout lining equipment on a year round basis. Right. Yeah. Just, right. Change, just change the middle line out exactly. and then right. just do it this way. But I really couldn't think of a better way that you could actually really target them and. In bulk because they do really eat so well, which we can well, kind of talk awesome. about that. And I'm like, I'm like, man. Well, a, you know how restaurants are. You got to change the name of the fish. So they take all fish that have that's bad names. Awesome. They that's change awesome. it to some weird name, and then that's fine. So they need to do that. Have first. you seen that problem with but you at your store with snakeheads? No, no, Using the word snakehead? No, I haven't. <laughs> yeah, we, we have sold a mess of snakehead nugget go baskets. Yeah. Oh my goodness. When, when everybody you hear, everybody sells these. Are you guys? Oh, you guys actually sell them for food? Oh wow. That's awesome. It's been a fantastic reception. Go to Wolford's store and try some snakehead nuggets. That's awesome. We had, we had Mr. Jim Zumba visit a couple yeah. weeks ago. Oh, and we took him over there. Yes. Yes. What did he say to you? Hey, can I buy a bag of your bread and take home with me? Two years ago, we did it. Yeah, not last year. The year before last year, we did a snakehead seminar in March, and we did a snakehead tasting because we found that actually at the time, because really no one knew about right. snakeheads, it wasn't even so much like learning to fish. They were like... What do they taste like? What do they oh, taste like? So we fried them up, and and, and I feel like that turned half the people on. They were like, "Oh, this is what they taste." Okay, yeah, I'll go fish for these. Yeah. You know, like it was <laughs> I, I think that's the. I think that's kind of the other cool part about it. We've got we got a new fish here. That's as far as table fare goes. Doesn't get much better. I mean, I, I, I like people ask me all the time: rockfish, perch, flounder. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I I gotta be honest with you. I mean, I, I have sat down and given to people, not told them what it was. Mm -hmm. Mystery fish. Mystery fish. Well, not mystery. Fish. And they eat it and like, man, this is so good, what is it? And I tell them it's snake and they're like, yeah. ain't no way, man. And I say, come over here, look at this trash bag. Oh my god, I can't believe I just ate that disgusting yeah. thing. <laughs> it's a great fish. It's it's, it's like a rockfish, basically. Oh, yeah. It's consistency. It doesn't quite have the same aftertaste though. Mm. That's the main thing. It doesn't have that fishy aftertaste. Yeah. You can do so much with it. You can yeah. fry it, use mm -hmm. it in tacos. And, and the other thing, like you you can cook it in your house and you don't smell it. Yep. That's the thing I know is the first time I ever cooked it. I don't smell it. Like I, I'm not saying it fish is smelly. Mm. But I'm saying, like, when like I cook fish. a rockfish, you know, I can smell mm. rockfish in my house. When I'm cooking perch, I can smell the fish cooking, you know. And the other great thing about it is yield. So oh, there are so many fish out there that have, so we just talked about catfish earlier. You get it to 10-pound yeah. catfish, it's probably 2 pounds of filet. Catch a 10-pound snakehead, it's probably 7 or 8 pounds of filet. So the, the yield is... I really don't know what the true percentage is, but I would have to think it's an eight. I would think it's a seventy or eighty percent yield, whereas most fish are probably in that forty, fifty percent. And for the bigger fish, you're talking sixty percent yield on it. Smaller fish, you're probably talking thirty to forty percent. And I know locally for like the meat fishermen around here, having the stuff we've had with striped bass early season, uh, yeah. crabbing not being as great as it is, it's like it's a great fallback where you can catch. I mean, you catch five or six nice fish. That's a lot of. Yep. That's, that's a lot I of tell food. people, you know, if you got some neighbors that could use something to eat, man, you ain't going to be hurting anything. Take them two or three of these fish. You know, I'm not saying take a hundred, but share it with people. You know, the, the more we can get people in the eat, the better we have to be proactive in case anything does come down I the road. Has you know? 
soup kitchen coming out <laughs> soon. Right, 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 right. Snakehead soup. Well, uh, okay. Absolutely. Why I was not? working the state fair uh, at, up there for the DNR booth. People were coming by and we had some snakehead videos going on and people were asking me if they can meet them. And they were shocked at how good you know they were. So, yeah. yeah. What's phenomenal. your guys' favorite recipe actually while we're on? I feel like that's always a good... A good I like either to fry them up, I bread them in mustard. I almost feel like I should take fried out because everything fried tastes Fish good. Fish tacos then. Fish you tacos. Bake it with a little bit of like salt and pepper on it and just like cube it yeah. up and put it in the tacos. Nice, nice. I'm a big grill guy. I, I do yeah. a lot of grill. Yeah, me too. I love my, it. My wife is real funny about anything. You know, it's like rockfish is the fish mm -hmm. and she'll eat um, speckled trout. Besides that, that's pretty much all that comes out of the bay she's interested in. Yeah. Won't eat sick deer. She'll chew. Oh, it's okay. Well, that's a crime. You know, I mean, she'll, she'll <laughs> do the first. okay on it. She'll white tail, forget that. But uh, she likes snake oil. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. She made a comment. About, I cooked some on the grill about a week ago. Do you just do she like the best general thing. spices? I do and different, yeah, different things. Yeah. But, uh, I stick with fried. That's the only way I sell them at the store. So you want to tell them your breading recipe? Nah, that's all right. That's an ounce. <laughs> Secret recipe. Secret recipe. For me, I do. I like to do two things with it. So uh, there's a there's a place in out in uh, Carroll County called Outlaw Barbecue. I get my barbecue sauce from him. And what I'll do is I'll take 10 or 15 pounds of fillets and just broil them in the oven. Mm -hmm. Then I'll pull the fillets out and I have a big mixing bowl. I'll throw all the fillets in there and I shred it all out. I take the barbecue sauce, but then I mix everything together. I look horrible. I'm covered in barbecue sauce. You know, licking my, licking we can my all envision. Right. <laughs> so anyway, so there, I'll put it in pint containers. Mm -hmm. Fifteen dollars a pound. Buy it all day long. They can make sliders. Oh, just cake. shredded. Yep. Shredded barbecue. barbecue. Yep. You can make sandwiches with it. Yeah. It's awesome, dude. Awesome. All right, I'll try it. So we'll my, uh, my the other way that I like to do it is I use half. It's called House Altry Seafood Seasoning. And the other half that I use is called white stone flour, which is from a grist mill up in mm -hmm. Harford County. It's just ground flour. And then here's my kicker. One teaspoon of chicken seasoning. Just shake the breading around. I don't egg my fish or anything. I just drop them right in there in that batter, throw them in a the pan and fry them, or throw them in the oven and boil them. Mm -hmm. And they're just delicious like that. I think the chicken seasoning, every, everybody eats, they're like, man, this is different. What's in it? Mm -hmm. You get something in here, I'm like, chicken seasoning. Get out of here. That's <laughs> fine. I'm definitely with you. Well, fried is obviously yeah, delicious, so I'll take that out of it. Grilled, I think, is a, a great yeah, way. And, and and it's usually either like just lemon, salt, pepper, some J.O. seasoning or something. But what I also like to do, with, which I like to do with all fish, because a lot of times you start catching these fish and it's like you just get bored of eating it every day. <laughs> so if you use like any teriyaki seasoning, specifically like Miss Yoshida's, or anything like that, and you just put a little J.O., let them soak overnight in a bag, and then grill them. Oh, it's good. completely different oh, texture, yeah. flavor, it soaks into the meat. It's a great way to break it up. I always feel like when I have people who hate fish, that's what I go with because it takes it takes all of the other junk out really of good, it. Actually. So really good. that's definitely my favorite on that one. I, I think I think one of the coolest things to see is that they're doing so many pictures shared to our page of what they're making at home. Right. You know, I mean, every day we're getting something on the page of what somebody has made, some kind of new dish, some kind of cream sauce, some kind of tacos, some kind Smoke of it. smoked rolled up. Mm -hmm. What's Doug doing up down at Madison? He's doing sticks. He's got fish sticks and he's got tacos. Snakeheads on a stick. So it's, yeah, a, it's a big piece of snakehead on a skewer. Yeah. Nice. So That's basically what this needs there. to evolve to is anglers needs to start frying <laughs> snakehead and then we'll be like the two Philly cheese steaks in Philadelphia. It'll be who has the better snakehead nuggets or yeah. something. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And I'll, and I'll back both operations. He'll, back, he'll just ride. <laughs> I'll market both He'll come to anglers. Yeah. He'll say, oh, babe, there it is. And then he'll go down. <laughs> Mike, share a comment. We're going to give you a free fishing rod today. No, I'm just um, I think we're going to be probably wrapping this whole thing up here um, pretty shortly. So um, uh, um, any other things you guys really wanted to talk about as far as the snakehead fishing? I mean, definitely, again, wanted to plug your guys' store. You guys have all kinds of great food there. Lures. Plus, I know uh, you guys do book the guide trips there. You guys are right where it's all happening. Absolutely. So, right you know, yeah, hundred percent. Go stop by there, and if you're lucky, Kaz may or may not be there, or unlucky, depending on who you <laughs> yes, are. Right. You only see so, me fly by the store ninety mile an hour sometime during the day. I'll say one thing, and I tell everybody who who I've taken on God, when you're fishing for snakeheads, they're no different than bass. Presentation of the lure is eighty-five percent of catching. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you're to the left, you're to the right on a slow day. They're not going to move six inches to hit it. If you go over the head, you drag it over and it might grab But if you hit on top of them, sometimes they will blow up. You can't believe the reaction time. Yeah. I have literally 
had a lure hit the water and they're out of the water with it before you can even react. We were I mean, talking about the dragonflies earlier. Really much more than the bass. They, they, they can explode. It's that quick. Especially yeah. the frogs. I've seen the frogs but, are the most reaction strikes that I've seen. Of them anyway. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I think the other thing of that, like he said, the presentation, I mean, everything a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, but also the time base. So we're all talking about catching, catching, catching as though all we do is go out and throw a line and catch it. And I think we've all probably spent six or seven hours out there fishing maybe the same general area until you find that right exactly. thing that they that they want. So to those people listening, you know, my grandfather always used to say this, fish are not unlike anything. They do not eat 24 hours a day, every minute of the day. They're just, they're just like any other species, so it's like yes. any other sport. You're gonna fail more than you see. Yeah, <laughs> but all those techniques, like you're talking about, how to turn them on, all those types of things. It's like those are the, you know, it's a lot of little tricks. Yeah, and exactly. like, like you gotta try everything and not give up. Exactly. I think that's the biggest yeah. thing because that's they're they're there a lot of times, and yeah. you, you just can't give up. I mean, I've I've easily been out there and been skunk plenty of times, or only caught one fish, or you know this and that, and, and maybe it was like you're saying, just. If I was a little left, right. And you're up in, in a marsh, and it's and it's in and out those little pockets. I, I had a fellow fish with him one day, and he, he cast in one of his pockets, and he was over a branch with, with a frog, and he was getting ready to snatch it. I said, don't snatch dog. He said, I said, there's a snakehead in there. I said, bob that thing. And about the third time he bobbed it, the snakehead grabbed it, snapped the branch off, and he caught snakehead like two and a half feet long. Wow. You know, and then that's, that, that's 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 the thing, you know, and uh, that's that's the thing with it. That's why presentation is so important. And if you can't go out in the backyard, put a bucket in the backyard. It's my dad did with my brother and I. We went to go fishing. We got spinning rods for Christmas. He gave us a bucket and he made these little wooden plugs. Sent us out in the backyard. He said, when you can hit that bucket for five times, mm -hmm. I'll take you fishing. Yeah, there's spring, man, <laughs> was up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it that's not my dad. They had that little spinning contest like you do with kids now. When, when we got first Well, when you're casting <coughs> all these weeds, rocks, and stuff, oh, yeah. you have to be accurate. I mean, yeah, I think, like, precise. skipping plastics is, like, like it's all, you see it on the bass circuit, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is what we're all doing. Uh, you know, like, because you have, you have yeah, to, to. You have to to hit those areas and to get in those. I told a fellow that went with me, I said, you got a pool? He said, yeah. I said, Go out there, drink a beer, throw the beer can in the pool, and try to hit it. <laughs> that, you know, because that's the whole thing. Presentation is everything. Yeah, and I think, that, and I don't know if you guys see it a lot, it's obviously shallow water. You know, again, people just think they're these aggressive, crazy, shark-type fit. And it's like, they do spook easy, so it's presentation. But also, you know, you can't just be banging around right. the boat and, like, yeah. it's very easy to spook I'll these fish. You. I'm not saying they won't hit a lure after that, but you'll see it because you'll just see the mud yep. just yep. go and you're like, oh, crud, oh, crud, oh, crud. Especially when you're bank fishing. When well, you're yeah. up in the shallows, you got to be real careful not to hang your hand every side of your boat, right? See that? That happened to my thumb a while back. That was last year when I got my thumb hanging in the water like that, right? Yeah, the terrible thing is people would believe it if you said <laughs> That's okay. I, I had last year a guy shoot a sick of deer right into a tree, right? So he bust his nose all up. So I put a post up, just being funny, I said, yeah, I had to... Had to help this sick of deer out. He was getting bit on the nose while I was taking a drink out there by a snakehead, so I put it out of his misery. People were are they really eating snakeheads? Are they really biting the sickers in the face? You know, I mean, the, the, the biggest thing with this is there's a lot of things that people have said that aren't true. There's a lot of things that people have said that are true. So, so it's more fun discretion. to just not know the difference. That's right, I, that's I, how I, I think it is. Right, right, right. Yes. right. Mm -hmm. right. It adds to the mystique of the fishing, the fishery, the fish itself. I, I like people guessing and, you know, the stories and this and that. There's there's only, like, you know, you can find a half-truth probably oh, yeah. somewhere. There's always a great fish story. Yeah, there's always a that, great fish And that's story. what I want to say about these fish. You know, the one good thing I can say about this fish, when we all go, at the end of the day, we all have got some kind of good story to tell one another. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all hooting and hollering about, man, you won't believe what happened to me out there. You know, so I think, I think mm -hmm. that... This fish is actually bringing some people together. It's yeah, bringing what a few else people. Are you gonna, what else are you going to freshwater fish for? The average is 16 inches, and the above average is three feet long. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I used to make fun of all my employees. And they're, and they're goody. I used to make fun of all my employees who work here. There's like a bunch of them who are hardcore bass fishermen. My store is probably what one mile from the Chesapeake Bay, which right. is which is 10 to 20 pound straight bass, but they go out there just trying to beat up these two to three bass. So, yeah, being able to catch, you know, fish that big, get that kind of fillet out of it, that amount of action in a day, um, as well as just the, as well as the areas. I know half of us fish because you like being out on the water, you like being by yourself, and it's like, you know, the bay itself has a lot of beauty to it, but just the same way you go down to Dorchester County and you're like, oh, man, man di in different ways, but you're just like, this is gorgeous, you know. You, you, you the drive down the road, there's a ditch, you see a fish swim down, you slam the brakes on, you grab your rod, you throw a frog real quick, catch that fish, get back in the car and go. 
You tell me where you can go around anywhere in the United States and fish ditches like we're fishing in Dorchester County and catch 40, 50 fish. I think we also should we need in the next time to talk more about how Taz finds snakeheads. So he throws minnows in the water. I think next like, we got to talk about. To I'm, I'm wondering if you track bald eagles and see where they're see where they're beating down on snakeheads. Honestly, what I do before I fish every area, if you ever watch me, the first thing I do is reach in the water. I take a little sip. If I taste a snakehead in there, I'm staying. <laughs> He's like, and that's how I get everybody to leave. They say, hey, uh, we better get away from this crazy guy. <laughs> this dude's drinking the water, man. I'm out of here. This guy's going to do next now. Well, I think, then, I, think, I think we've had enough today. This was, this was great. Yeah, this was great. Thank you, Gary, Jim, Eddie, Taz, for all coming over Absolutely. here to our wonderful store. Definitely stop by here. Come talk to us. we got a bunch of guys here really passionate about it. Hey, and don't about. forget these... Can I say the word badass? These are badass hats. Yeah, I don't care what you say. <laughs> um, we got tons of snakehead lures. I think just like you guys, like we literally are getting new snakehead lures every day of the week. Like it's it's ridiculous. So definitely stop by the store. We love talking about it too to people. And uh, just the way I know you can message Kaz on uh, on snakeheadlife.com. Before I forget Daryl's baits. I was talking about the glow in the dark. Yeah, I know he's coming out with some new stuff too. Lots of there's good there's new stuff all the time. Yeah, every week. Every yeah, day. yeah. Almost new every day. Yeah, new stuff all the time. So um, you know, definitely book some guides with uh, Gary here for. I, are you going to do both Sika and Snakehead in one? No, not good, not going to do Sika this year. No. Oh no. No, no one. I was hoping it, you were going to have some anyway. sort of. Because well, she's going to go with Snakeheads because yeah. you're getting the calls on yeah. Snakeheads. Yeah. yeah. And and I've talked to a couple of people Snakeheading right now, Monday through Wednesday, maybe Thursdays, no Friday, Saturday. Mm. Is then you're interfering with all the people that are out. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 And, uh, it's one thing to get shot. Get shot with a bow and a kayak is not going to be good. <laughs> yeah, that probably probably wouldn't. Yeah, and that's another thing people need to think about. You're coming down to visit this time of the year at Blackwater. Keep in mind, these guys are in the marsh and they are hunting. Absolutely. You know, and if you see somebody in there hunting, in full swing. be respectful, man. I mean, there's plenty of snakeheads in the whole refuge. You ain't got to catch them where that guy's hunting at. You know? Pick up your trash. Yeah, yeah pick up your trash. Yeah. And, and, and that's something else I do want to say. I want to thank everybody who, who who stepped up to the plate this whole year. That, it's been a big success this I mean, we've been giving out trash bags people, going around oh, shaking hands. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? We want to make a difference, and we want people to come. We don't want the county coming to us and saying, hey, man, this yeah. is a problem. Well, I think the county's coming to us saying, keep doing what yeah. you're doing, man. Well, once you know a few people are doing it, then, you know, you know, you don't want to sit there and pick up everybody else's trash. Right. But if you feel like everybody's chipping in, I feel like Take a few it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, thank you guys for doing that stuff, too. Thanks, Cass, for pushing the snake heads on everything. Mike, I love you, We man. appreciate you guys. Yeah. Tune in, or we appreciate you guys tuning in for thank all you. this kind of, all, this whole thing. It was a lot of fun talking to you guys. Absolutely around so yeah. we'll catch you guys next time for the next seminar thank you so much